So the next thing that we're going to be making is a function that is going to return what move the computer wants to make. Uh, just before we start making that function, we're actually just going to go up here to the isGameOver method, and we're going to pass in board vows, and then we're also going to go down here to where we call it and pass in board vows as well. So what this is going to do is it'll let us run different lists of the board um, into that uh, function without having to change the actual list the game is using. So to create the function that's going to um, return what move the computer is going to make, we're going to say def computer move, and we're going to pass in a parameter called val. And what val is, it's either going to be a one or a negative one. So if it's one, that's basically going to mean that the computer is x, and then if it's a negative one, that means the computer is an o. And so to start off this function, we are going to have two for loops. We're going to say for i in range three. And then we are going to say for j in range 3 as well. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to create a copy of the board values list so that we can test out um, adding a new value into it without actually changing the real, the real list for the game. So we'll say like b copy is going to equal copy dot deep copy of board vowels and so in order to use copy we have to import it so if you don't have if you're not using PyCharm um, you just want to go up to the very top and say import copy and the next what we're going to do is we are going to say if oh and by the way the reason we're using a deep copy is if we were just to do like the, the other method of saying board vowels and then doing this like this will still give us a copy of the list, but if we change B copy, it'll also change board vowels, and we don't want that to happen. So that's why we have to use copy.deep copy. So that we can have two fully separate lists. Um, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if B copy of I and J um, is equal to zero, then we're gonna reassign it to the um, value. So B copy of i and j is going to equal val. And then once we do that, we're going to check if doing if assigning it to val will let the game be over, which essentially means that the computer will win. So we'll say if is game over of b copy. So if that returns true, we are going to add a piece um, to the pieces on board list, which is like the one that draws it out. Oh, what's going on. So we'll say pieces on board dot append piece and then we will give it j times 200 and then i times 200 and false. Well, okay so it's going to be false because this last parameter is if it's x or not and so that actually depends on that depends on the value of of val because if it's 1 like we said earlier, it's going to be x, and the negative one is o. So we'll say append it, and then we'll say if if val equals one. No, if val equals negative one, and then else we're going to copy this, and we will say true instead. So this is just kind of like a one-line if statement. Um, if if the value is negative one, it'll do this part, and then it, otherwise it'll do this. So it's relatively simple. Um, and then once that happens, we are going to just return v copy. And then so the way the way we're actually going to use this method is to, we're going to go down here to the while loop, and before we make any edits, we actually want to go to the top and say add a parameter saying is to player. And we'll start it off as two players, so we'll say true at first, so that when the game runs, it'll be two player by default, and then the user can actually just manually switch it over to one player if they want to. And then we're going to go down here and 
we are going to say if it's not game over, then we're going to check if is two player. And then we're going to tab everything from mouse X to the, I mean, to the game over down here. We're going to tab all that over. And then we'll say else. So now we're going to get into if it's a one player. And then we'll do the same code that we, uh, we did earlier. So the way we're going to do that is we should actually just take out mouse X and click because we're going to use that in the else statement as well. So we're going to command X and then paste it right under if not game over. And then we are going to go to the else and say and paste this code in there. And we should also be checking to make sure we should also add this check in here as well. So if click, so if move count, then we'll do this, we'll say that, and then we'll tab all this over. So that is looking good. Next we're gonna add else that's gonna kind of be on the same level as if move count percent two, because if like this will be the user's move and then else will be the computer's move. And what we're gonna say is we're gonna set board vowels equal to computer move and we're gonna pass in we'll just pass in a negative one for now and then later we can add logic to like figure out if it's the computer if the computer's O or X. Right now we'll just keep the computer as O. So we'll pass in a negative one. And then we want to increment the move count. So that once the computer makes a move, the user will get to have a turn, and then we'll also check to see if that leads to game over. So game over equals is game over, and we'll pass in board vows. So I think that should be good. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna add um, some logic to switch it from one player to two player. So we're just gonna get, we'll just do that right now as like key presses. So right under where we, um, check to see if space was pressed we'll say if keys of pi game dot k underscore one then we'll say is two player is equal to false and then we'll say if keys of pi game dot k underscore two is two player is equal to true an S right there, and that'll switch from two player to one player. And yeah. So right now the computer can only is only gonna return a move if it can find a winning move. So if we were to test it and play just one on one right away, it wouldn't actually do anything. It would just kind of come out like this. So if I press I click on one and then I make a move the computer's just not going to do anything because it can't find a winning move so we're also going to add some logic to check if it can make a move that'll stop us from winning and then it'll kind of prioritize like going for corners as opposed to going for for the edges and kind of like we'll have kind of like a layered logic but before we implement that i'm just going to have it to where it can if it doesn't find a winning move it'll just pick any random valid square so we're gonna go and create another function. We'll do it right under under computer move. We'll say we'll call it def and then like cell ran move. And it's gonna basically return um like kind of like two points, well not two points, an i and a j, or like an x and a y of where the computer can move. So we'll like We'll start off with an empty list. We'll say valid moves is equal to an empty list. And then we'll say for i in range 3. And then for j in range 3. We're going to say if board values of i and j is equal to 0, and then valid moves dot append j and i and i switched j and i at the very end because j is gonna just match up with the x and i is gonna match up with the y and then at the very end after the for loop we'll just say return 
random dot choice. valid moves and so we have to import random and again if you don't have the selection you can just swipe up scroll up to the top and type out import random right here and yeah so then we're gonna go back to computer move and if it doesn't return B copy it's gonna after the for loop what it's gonna do is it's gonna say x and y are equal to select random move and then we're going to create another copy so we'll say b copy is equal to copy dot d copy deep copy of board vowels and then and then what we're going to do is we're going to assign the x and the y that we got to the value um, that's passed as a parameter. So we'll say B copy of Y and then X is equal to value. And then we'll say pieces on board dot append a new piece at X times 200 y times 200 and then false and then we'll do the same thing that we did up here actually so we can actually we can just copy this whole line and then paste it over there and after that we will return b copy so this will always be last in the method and it's always just gonna it's it, this is kind of like the like the backup, if it, if the computer doesn't find any moves, or then it'll always just select a random value move. So now when we run it, and if we switch it to one player, and if I like, if I go here in the computer, it does not pick a move because no. Oh, so we just have to switch these parentheses to square brackets, and then now let's give that a shot. So if I go to one player and I click this, so it, it put over there, if I go here. Okay, no, so this should be, this should be X and Y. I don't know why I typed in I and J. So now when we run it, we switch to one player, click X, we get an O there. If I go here, it puts an O there. If I go here, it puts an O there. So it's just fully random. It doesn't have any strategy to it. The problem is the computer is trying to select a move from an empty list. So it's kind of returning null. And the way to fix that would be going in here and saying if the length of valid moves is greater than zero, then it's going to return a random choice. Otherwise, it'll just return it'll just return none. Yeah, capital line. So now let's see what happens. And then up here we'll say if. So we're going to set random move to. So we'll just say like move equals select a random move. And then if move does not equal none. With the colon, we will do all of this, and then here we'll just replace that with the move. And now it should be fully functional. One player X. Go. Let's go here X. Okay. Let's go there. Let's go there. Oh, so we're so we just have to add return and board valves. Next. Okay, so now if the board fills up, no one wins, it doesn't crash. Press space, it'll stay one player. 
picks a random move if it can. It picks a winning move if there is one. And it is fully functional. Next, what we have to do is actually add the code to where it'll pick a move that'll stop me from winning. So if it didn't have a move to go here, to let itself win, it would have gone here to prevent me from winning. 